Hey everyone, this is a short lecture on Dennett's Where Am I? Um, so this article is kind of fun for one thing because it's told as a story, not just as a straight up argument. And um, for another thing, the story is kind of crazy. And I think what Dennett is trying to do here is to make us think about personal identity, about what makes a person the same across time, and in particular, what kind of changes can a person survive? So. Um, I think of the, st the story as happening in five stages. And the first stage is just Dennett before anything happens to him. His brain is inside his body, everything's intact, no problem there, figuring out where he is or anything like that. Then the second stage is when his brain and his body become separated. And now, as soon as that happens, he starts to wonder, where am I? And he thinks, well, maybe I'm where the brain is, maybe I'm where the body is, maybe I'm just wherever I think I am, where my point of view is. But all of those things have their problems, and um, I guess I'll leave it to you to look at the text to see what he thinks the problems with those suggestions are, but um, before we get to any resolution on that, we get stage three, and that's when uh, Dennett's old body, which he has named Hamlet, is destroyed, and eventually he gets a new body, Fortinbras, and Fortinbras seems to be behaving in just the ways that Hamlet behaved. And so if Dennett is doing fine, but he has a new body, then it couldn't have been the case that his old body was somehow essential to his person personhood. Um, if he can survive getting a new body, then the body wasn't all that important in the first place. Um, and now stage four is when uh, we have the brain simulation, Hubert, running alongside Dennett's regular brain. And we learn that the brain simulation and the brain can be switched back and forth between, and Dennett never notices any difference. So it seems like if Dennett still survives even as the brain simulation is engaged and he's not using his regular brain, then the brain doesn't seem to be essential to identity either. Um, so it's not the body, it's not the brain, we don't know what it is. And then at the very end of the story we learn that the brain and the simulation have gotten out of sync. So it's kind of hard to think about what's going on here when you first read it, but um, what you have, it seems to me, is two people who share the same body, and only one person has control of the body at any given time. So one person is controlled by the brain, Yorick, and one person is controlled by the brain simulation, Hubert, and each of them can take turns by having the body press the switch of taking control of the body. And this is a super puzzling state of affairs, but I think it's the way it's gotta be. Um, I mean, the way we have to think about it, that there's one body, Ford and Braz, there's the brain, Yorick, there's the brain simulation, Hubert, and together these things somehow make two persons sharing one body. And one thing that's kind of unfortunate about the piece, although I don't think it would be the same otherwise, is that what Dennett is doing is giving a completely negative story. And when I say negative, um, what I mean is that he's not telling us how it is or what he wants us to believe. Instead, he's just offering criticisms or arguments against things. So he's saying, well, personal identity can't consist in having the same body and it can't consist in having the same brain. But he never comes out and says what he thinks personal identity really is. And that's something that I think I will leave to you to puzzle out for yourself.